White Fairy Queen asks, I have two questions for you. How did you become goth and do you ever think of moving away from Australia? If so, where would you like to live? Love the earrings. Thank you. You know when you've been something for so long, you kind of forget how it started. That's me. I can't remember wearing color. I, I can't remember transitioning into black because I've been like this for so long, like a good 15 years. There's photos of me where I've got like short hair and an orange mohawk and I would have been like 13, 14, 15 and then you can see this transition but my memory is terrible, I honestly can't remember it. I, I see on YouTube these people talking about how they lived through the 90s and you know what they're wearing and how they got into goth. It was very organic, it was like a slow process over several years but can I pinpoint out what it was? No. <laughs> Not really, it's just a, a, a massive combination of all the things that I'm into. We heavily considered moving to America, but honestly, the gun laws scare me. And the thought of sending my children to a primary school where, you know, they could just have someone walk in with an automatic rifle and kind of kill a whole bunch of people really made me question that. We could have got a, we have a really nice house now, but with the money that we made from the sale of our previous home, we could have relocated quite easily. And I think it would have been better for my business because a lot of my sales from you guys are America. 95% of my stock and my bags go to America. So I'd love to be closer to you guys, but we're quite comfortable where we are. And I'm not saying like the gun laws would be the only reason we wouldn't come there. But it definitely was one of the first things in my mind when we considered it and started looking at real estate. We're very happy where we are now. <laughs> Gerard asks, all I want to know in the words of cake is how do you afford your rock and roll lifestyle? <laughs> I work hard. I've skimmed the questions and seen that a lot of them are based upon lifestyle and work and things like that. So I think I might just wait to answer that a little bit further on in the video. Crystal asks, where do you and your lovely family originate from? Vaughn was born in Berlin, so he is German. I had to ask my parents this the other day because they've always thrown around English and German, but I said, okay, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. So my grandparents were born in Australia, my great-grandparents were born in Australia, but my great-great-great-grandparents on my mother's side were from England, and on my father's side, one was from Germany, one was from England. So there's a very strong German and English thing going on there. And with Vaughn being German, our boys are half English, half German. Abigail asks, who or what inspired your style? I can't say it's one specific person. A lot of musical artists inspire how I look. I was a tomboy at a very young age. I got teased for like having no chest when I was in high school. So I feel like I've come into my womanhood, <laughs> so to speak, a little late. So now I like dressing really pretty. I'm lucky enough to have the figure to do it to wear tight fitting clothing and heels and just show off that femininity. I've always adored Dita Von Teese. She's a darker kind of bombshell. But a lot of my idols come from movies. I can't remember the girl's name, but I remember being obsessed with the girl in Blade 3. She's the one that had her fangs and her vagina. <laughs> I didn't think she was stunningly pretty, but I thought she was fierce as fuck, and I just loved that. Another one is Nancy from The Craft, same thing. She had those big, beautiful eyes, and she just had this meanness about her, and I'm like, I want that. It's not something that you can just put on with makeup, it's a confidence. Celine from Underworld, definitely. I mean, the tight leather pants, my love for like full length jackets. Yeah, I just. I could totally be an extra in that movie. Queen of the Damned, I love how the stat dress, I love how they dress that entire band, the fishnet, the mix of rock and roll and goth. Ugh, makes my black little heart flutter. Cecile asks, many questions. <laughs> so here goes, do you have a job aside from your activity as a business owner? Speaking of, how successful is your business? As in, can you pay your bills with what you earn through it? What is your husband's job <laughs> regarding your business? How do you do Okay, I can't answer all this. This is like its own video. Oh my god. Okay, um, yes, my business does pay my bills. Did it the previous year? Maybe halfway through the year, like 17, 18 was when my business started to get bigger. If it was back in 16, 17, no, could not survive off my business. I think my store did five grand the entire year. So it was just bonus, like little pocket money on top of what I was doing at the time, which was full-time teaching when I was back in Sydney. When I say full-time, it was like four days a week. So that was my full-time. And where I was teaching was at my music school, which I owned with my husband. So I taught there for about 15 years. I taught singing, guitar, and violin. Couldn't have nails back then, hence why I've embraced them now. They're so pretty. You cannot play a fretted instrument. 
with long nails. So since moving to Tamworth two years ago, we opened a second school. My husband is still teaching, but I really tried to push my business a little more and haven't had to teach, but I still manage both schools. So on top of having two kids running my business, fulfilling all of my orders with myself and my husband, designing everything, doing all the images for my website, doing all the photography, for my own Instagram, trying to push my fashion, doing all the Photoshop editing, doing work for other businesses, raising two kids, cooking every day, cleaning my house, myself, doing the washing for two kids that go through so many socks. If you have kids, you know what I'm talking about. And then I take all the phone calls for our school in Sydney and in Tamworth. My phone is ringing constantly. I've got it on silent now because I don't want to be interrupted doing this video. So I handle all the bookings, I hire new teachers, I do the taxes for the three businesses. It's full on. I really need to plan my days. I mean, it's not Jeffree Star full on. I don't have three assistants or anything like that. Um, I wish I did <laughs> because then I could give some of the more tedious and boring jobs to other people so I could have more time for creativity. But I've really had to time manage myself because I've noticed that I can sit on the computer and just go to YouTube or I can go on Instagram and just waste time. And I'm like, shit, I've been in here for an hour. I'm supposed to be designing and I've just done dumb shit on my phone. And since having kids, time is quite limited. So I'm really working on that and trying to grow as a person so I can achieve what I would like to achieve. So my husband's job as a teacher, he's a very talented musician. He teaches guitar, drums, bass, ukulele, a bunch of Middle Eastern instruments, songwriting, musicianship, audio engineering, piano, there's, there's a whole bunch of things that I'm probably missing. But that was a big part of how we came together, our love for music, and we gelled instantly and we write songs together. Musically, we um, complement each other very well. So my husband is full-time working as a music teacher, and I think for myself, working for 15 years before moving to Tamworth and now having the opportunity to really push my YouTube and my Instagram and my profile my business something that made me a better person was 15 years of teaching there is something that is very humbling and real about working with children not all of our students were children many were adults some were seniors but it's like having that life contact with people knowing how to speak to people knowing how to empathize with people and I think a lot of my personality has been developed through those 15 years of teaching and I think if you look at anyone that is a good kind of public speaker or comfortable on YouTube usually they've had some kind of job or experience with people not always I'm not saying it's a prerequisite or anything like that but I feel like it has definitely helped me feel more comfortable speaking to you guys and just the way that I use my words and I explain things and I get comments on that a lot like wow you're so well spoken my job for 15 years was to explain things to people I think one of the hardest things to do sometimes especially with singing because it's something that you can't see inside your throat you need to explain how to use things that you can't see. You know, with guitar, you can use your fingers and the guitar and where they're positioned as a reference. But for singing, it's really about how you can explain things. So I, I broke it down and I really found a way to relate what I was teaching to the person. And I think I just took that on as a life lesson and it's just become part of how I speak and how I communicate with you guys. I miss my teaching a lot. I miss my students. I've got one, Diana. Hi, Diana, if you're watching this. I taught her since she was eight or nine. All through high school, we went through the CPM, which are these exams that, that go all the way up to the highest grade. And I've seen her go through high school and then she started teaching at my school and she's still there. She's the singing teacher of my school. You know, and I, I started teaching her when she was this little tiny cute girl and now she's so big and I'm still like, Diana, stop growing up. <laughs> And I'm still in contact with many of my students because I've just got these wonderful relationships with them. So that's what I did previous to doing what I'm doing now. Will I be able to continue to support myself just on my business in the future? That's a kind of a hard question because it depends on what I design and how successful those designs are. And if I keep doing collaborations, um, it's not like I'm a business where I consistently release something every month or every three months. Um, I'm just going with the flow and seeing where it takes me and I'm very grateful that I'm able to pursue this as much as I want to. If I had a nine to five job that took me away from my home and away from my family, I don't think I would have the time to spend on YouTube or designing. And in that regard, I know that I'm very lucky. She also asks, what do I use to take my photos? So I am a Canon girl. 
I, know, I can't really say I am a Canon girl anymore. I was for a very long time. I had a 5D, very expensive camera. Recently changed to what I'm using now, which is the Sony a7 III. It was an expensive little camera. It's mirrorless. Look that up if you don't know what it is. It's like this new fan dangled technological breakthrough that makes things better. But I'm really enjoying Sony and I'm so glad that I changed. Blackie asks, I think I heard you say somewhere on social media that your hubby is from Germany. If so, how did you both meet and how did you decide to stay in Australia? He was born in Berlin, but they moved here when they were one. So he's been an Australian citizen for pretty much most of his life. We met at his music school, which is the one that I keep speaking about that we now own together and he was my guitar teacher. Elizabeth asks kind of the same question um, about finances again. Do I make enough from my online store to survive at this point? Yes, but the bigger you get, the more expenses you get. At this point in time, I do, yes, but advice for people starting out would be to use pre-orders. When I was younger and I had no children and disposable cash just from working jobs like at Woolworths or Sanity, which yes, I have done people. I put a lot of money in merchandise. It was good merchandise, but I've still got it now. 15 years later, it hasn't sold out. I didn't have a market for it. It was kind of pre-internet, it was pre-YouTube. I had these ideas and I would just act on them. The camera just died, so hopefully I can pick up from where I left off, which was basically I invested a lot of money in products and didn't really have a customer base or a, a plan to market them. So my advice to anyone that may be starting a business of their own is to use pre-orders. It is a great way to see if the product that you're actually making, like if there is a need for it in the world. You know, if you release something and you might think it's great, only two other people might agree with you and then you can't really get a thousand of that made. It would be a bad financial investment and would be a bad business decision. And for someone that has made that themselves many times in the past, my advice to you is so start with pre-orders. Start small and try to create things that aren't already out there in the world. They need to be slightly different. Teresa asks, are you planning on doing an updated house tour with all the newer furniture? Absolutely. The first will be my bedroom. I was thinking today I might pop my video camera on my little spinning 3D wheel thingy medoozle, that's its technical name, and just show you guys where my bedroom is at at the moment. It's still missing some wallpaper, but it's looking pretty fucking good. I know I've taken my time in doing the room tour because honestly every few weeks, and my friends are always laughing about this, they're like, whenever we come over, furniture is in different places. I'm like, yeah, I'm just trying to figure out where it goes. It's not right yet. I can't move the bed because there's only one wall that the bed will fit on. So I kind of like that because it doesn't give me the incentive to try it anywhere else. But every other wall has been moved around and I think I've finally come to some kind of agreement with the room and the furniture. <laughs> and now it's just finishing touches. So yes, it is on my to-do list for 2019. The bedroom tour will probably be first wardrobe and then eventually an entire house. What do I use to edit my videos? I use Premiere Pro. Everything that I use is Adobe because um, that's just what I learned on and what I'm really fluent in using. Dragon Slayer asks, what is your natural hair color? Mine is a mix of blonde and dark blonde. Yeah, that's exactly what I'd say mine is as well. If you diet, which products do you recommend? I use Garnier. I think it's Olay. I'm always showing it in my Instagram stories. I'll try to put up a picture of it so you can see which one it is. It doesn't have any of those nasty smells and I think it's ammonia free as well. It seems very delicate on my hair. I've been using that one for at least 10 years. What do you do for fun or to relax? <laughs> I need to take more time out. I find playing with the kids very relaxing. It's the polar opposite of what I do when I'm filming for you guys or designing. And the things that are so important to them, you know, as children is sometimes magical, you know, just chasing ducks in the park or watching a leaf fall off a tree, you know, going outside and watching a hailstorm. They really bring me back to earth and kind of center myself and sometimes make me realize that things that I'm focusing on are not important at all. So I would say chilling with my kids. The other thing is just chilling and watching a movie. It is very rare these days to be able to watch a movie from beginning to end completely uninterrupted so I do that as often as I can and we have ordered a new couch which I'm so excited about it's blood red for our living room and that is due next month in May so I'm going to be watching a lot of movies this winter. Aries asks will the Black Friday clutch with spikes and the Mahavsan bag and will it be available this year also any other upcoming collaborations I'm not sure about the Black Friday clutch with the spikes. Um, we've still got to sell a few of the version 2, which is the one without the spikes. Mahavsun and I are working on a new project, but it won't be the purple bag. We're completely leaving that as a limited edition run, as it was supposed to be, and moving on to something new and exciting. 
The new collabs, as I've mentioned, would be the continuation with Black Friday. We'll have a few new products out. Throughout the course of this year, there's Danny Divine, there's a mirror that I'm making for Christiana One and Only. They're in the design phase at the moment, so I've just got to finish my files and get them to my manufacturer to start samples. Natasha asks, what are your plans for your next album? I think I've kind of touched on that. I honestly don't know how realistic an entire album is. I think it'll be more likely that we'll release one track at a time and then at some point possibly join them all together and then name it an album uh, you will be waiting <laughs> like when the kids are 18 then we'll have the time to finish an album <laughs> Samuel asks, I really love your shirt, where did you get it from? Um, I've been buying everything from Dolls Kill. The sheer one with the nice little um, collar is by the brand Widow. Excellent, Becca asks, if you could swap places with anyone for the day, who would it be and what would you do? Well, seeing you haven't stipulated if they were dead or alive, I would say Freddie Mercury. Imagine being in Freddie's body for the day, definitely during one of the stadium tours with a ridiculous amount of people and Brian May to your left. <laughs> Oh, I get tingles just thinking about it. Darkness loves all. What music do you like? Oh, that is a video on its own. I'm just gonna like name some. Been listening to a lot of Amaranth recently. Ghost BC, Ramstein, Marilyn Manson, Nine Inch Nails, Evanescence, Early Flyly, Queen, Fleetwood Mac, Arch Enemy, Cradle of Filth, Lacuna Coil, Rob Zombie, Corn, Black Sabbath, the soundtrack to the movie Queen of the Damned, Clan of Zymex with Inceptation, The 69 Eyes, Typo Negative of course, Faith and the Muse, Incubus, Moonspell, Nick Cave, and an oldie but a goodie Led Zeppelin. <laughs> as someone with a Nosferatu as their profile pic on YouTube said, how do you keep your epidermis so flawless and fair? So jealous. Touching on the fair thing again, I don't do anything to lighten my skin, this is just my complexion. And I did mention in my upcoming Sephora haul what my current skin routine is and I've been very happy using Ollie Hendrickson, which I recently found when in LA at Sephora. BB asks, am I happy? There's a little bit more to her question, but <laughs> generally, am I happy? Um, Yes, most of the time. I do suffer with anxiety and depression. I don't think that's in any way linked to the gothic subculture. I think that's just humanity in general. So I really try to ground myself and spend time with my children because as I mentioned before, they bring me back to reality and make me focus on what is important. But yeah, I, I happily say that I need medication to feel more stable. And I understand that it's not my fault. I run out of certain chemicals within my brain and these pills make me feel better. They don't dumb me down. They don't make me like a zombie. They just don't make me hate the world and myself. Shelly asks, you seem very confident. What advice would you give to others to find their own confidence to shine without feeling awkward every time? Find a style that you like and that you think is flattering to yourself. Music was definitely the way that I found myself specifically through guitar. Up until that point, I was a very awkward teenager. I was kind of just going along with my friends and they liked pop and things like that. But it wasn't until I found guitar, I, I feel like I found myself through playing that instrument and figuring out that I was quite talented and, and a natural songwriter and I'm like yeah I found my thing and that really gave me confidence so find the thing that makes your heart race find that thing that you're good at even if you're doing something totally different and you're like you know I really would like to be doing this make little steps towards that you know you only live once you've got to be doing things that you enjoy and having said that I would really like to make what I'm working on more about music and go back to my roots a little more Stuart asks, born in Scotland. No, I was born in Australia and my heritage is German and English. Hate Stone says, what content is your music about? The entire As Angels Bleed album was like a concept vampire album if you read the lyrics. They all have a consistent theme being like romancing with the death. Vampires, my obsession with immortality and bloodlust and my love for vampire movies and novels. And it really is just the soundtrack to my life at that time. So we were watching on repeat Bram Stoker's Dracula, Underworld, Blade, True Blood. I'm all heavily inspired by these movies or TV shows. Queen of the Damned, that was a huge one for me. I remember watching that and I'm like, I like... I like, I like, I like everything. I, was like, I like, I like, I can't tell you specifically what I like. I like everything and the, uh, the dissidents, the, the halftime drum fills, even the music in say Spartacus, which we were watching at the time, Spartacus and Rome, more Spartacus. But the soundtrack to that was very inspiring. The mix of these big storm drums with um, the electronic loops I found completely inspiring. And I don't actually think that came out too much in As Angels Bleed. 
the newest stuff we're working on is definitely darker and grander and possibly older like more mature sounding which is a good thing because i've gotten older since releasing that album as well so it will be exciting to show you where we're at now and then we can reflect back on where we were when we released that last album karina asks do you get much hate for your look in australia no not at all never <laughs> not even once <laughs> I mean, yeah, you get the occasional stupid comment from a dickhead, but like, very rare. Very rare. Okay, the next one from Atlas is, are you and your husband monogamous? Well, I did say you could ask me absolutely anything, didn't I? Yes, we very much are, and we are coming up to our 10 year anniversary. Cherie asks, if you could choose three people to have dinner with at the same time, who would they be? First has to be female, second has to be male, and the third you have to bring back from the dead. What a cool question. First female, hmm. Considering we're all going to have dinner and I want some interesting conversation to go down, I would say Lizzie Hale. I'm loving Hailstorm at the moment. She's like a rock and roll goddess. I would love to sit down and talk guitars with her. Second one would be Alice Cooper. I'd want to ask him if that canvas of mine is still up in his home and if his mother still has the canvas of him up in her house. I know, right? You're like, what the fuck are you talking about? I think I will do a future story time video about Alice Cooper and this crazy story. And the third, bring back from the dead. I'm so sad that I have to say this. <laughs> he shouldn't be dead, but Peter Steele. <sighs> that would be a great dinner. Matt Black Finish <laughs> says, when did you start singing? What was your start in singing? I very reluctantly started singing because I couldn't find any other singers. So I was playing guitar. I wanted to be in a band. I wanted to be in an all girl band. Runaways and Kitty were kind of like idols of mine. I didn't much like the music of Kitty, but I really respected I'm like, wow, all girl band metal, that's really cool. I was confident being behind the guitar. I was in no way ready to be a front woman. And I didn't think I had the vocals for it. So it took me probably a good five years to get out of my shell and stop singing in falsetto. <laughs> and I had a few lessons here and there when I was younger. I'm mostly self-taught. I did get some operatic lessons when I was a little bit older and I've always asked for help if I felt that I needed it. One thing that I struggle with as a singer is that I never think that I'm good enough. My range is a little limited. You know, I, 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 wish, I wish I had the voice like Lizzie Hale, you know, or the singer from Amaranth, just that, oh, a little bit higher and then I wouldn't struggle with every other song. I mean, I make do with what I have, but I've always felt like I wasn't good enough. And I guess that's why I work so hard at my vocals, because I was always my worst critic. I was always trying to please myself. Amelia says, you do a lot of different things. I sure do. <laughs> How do you manage that? And what is the one thing that you really feel is your calling? Mm. It comes in phases. Say 2012 to 2015 was all about the band. Music, recording the album, we went overseas to record it. And then there was a good two years in there where I just disassociated myself from everything. I mean, Instagram wasn't even a thing yet. Um, I wasn't really on YouTube. I had my two beautiful boys in that time. Then I came back and I just found this like deep inspiration to start doing things again. My camera just died again. I apologize if that last question was a bit cut off. I can't actually remember what I was speaking about. <laughs> the last question of the day is by, I hope I'm saying your name right, sweetheart. Reiken Devor, Reiken Devor? He's making me a lovely piece of jewelry, which I can't wait to see. And he asks, who is your favorite childhood hero? Now, I don't know if you mean like superhero, like mythical fantasy, but I'm gonna just assume hero in general. And to me, mine was Freddie Mercury. I absolutely idolized the band. Bon woke me up just yesterday saying that Queen are coming to Australia again. I know it's with Adam Lambert and not Freddie Mercury, but it's still on my bucket list to see that band. So I'm very excited about that, which means I may be coming to Sydney very soon. But Freddie Mercury, when he had the long hair before he cut it off and went all short, he very much reminded me of my dad. And I've got photos where my dad had the same kind of hairstyle before he also chopped it off. And I've just got very fond memories of listening to Queen with my father and my mother when we go away on trips or when my mom was vacuuming. Saturday, every Saturday morning, Queen was always playing. Okay guys, I'm absolutely exhausted. I hope I answered most of your questions. I think we'll have to do another one of these, possibly when I get to 20,000, which isn't too far away. Another hello to all my new subscribers and a big hello to my old ones if you've been with me for a while. Please press that subscribe button if you haven't already. Comment down below. I always try to reply to as many comments as I possibly can and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye.